to Mike Check Waifu Waifu. Check waifu waifu. Martel, is that you? You mean Bleach is here? This is episode 174. Four. Oh, my check waifu waifu. As always, it's brought to you by Loot Complex. Make sure you go to lootcomplex.com. Use that offer code waifu to save on your entire cart. It's also brought to you by Don't Talk Shop. As well as our Patreon producers. Listen, we always shout out new people when we get Patreon producers. She was a Patreon producer once before. Okay. But, you know, it's only proper that we give a, a brand new shout out to a brand new supporter, producer of the podcast, Jalisa. Lisa, my best friend of nine, uh, ten years. Probably, yeah, almost ten years. Shout out to our uh, other producers, A.B. and Brown Dre, the GOAT G. Johnny from the show Go High. Ked the Pro from Chaotic Culture Podcast, explicitly Monique Williams and our boy Nachi. Again, shout out to Lisa for producing this episode with the others as well. Thank y'all so much for supporting us. We love y'all. Um, yeah, it's going to be a, a big episode for you today. We have some uh, listener inquiries from some of our friends over there on at Mike Check Waifu Wife. Wait, at Mike Check Waifu on Twitter. Okay. Um, <laughs> shit. <laughs> we got a big show. Bleach Talk is back. I'm excited to talk about that. In the uh, first episode of Chainsaw Man. Those are going to be the uh, topics of discussion uh, for this first half of the show. In the second half of the show, we're going to spoil episode two of Eminence and Shadows, episode two of Blue Lock, and episode three of My Hero Academia, season six. So please look forward to that. And then before we go into our song break, we have a new uh, a new experience for you guys. It's going to be a, it's going to be a dope one. So before we had get to know my check waifu waifu, and I'll share with you with the new the new mid uh call it midterm shout out to Shogo High the midterm of the episode and how we uh and how we gonna do this so please look forward to that but tell how you feeling brother I'm feeling good bro you know um well I don't know if they know but we we a little little we a day behind to looking to record bro but, but this is about to be amazing this is about to be a great episode yeah, even though we're a day behind, it's kind of special because we get to talk about two episodes of Bleach, opposed to just yes. one. It sucks for Polo though because I have to edit and it's ten p.m. right now, so I'm not going to bed until like <laughs> two or three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> My bad, bro. It's also, awful, in between that time, we had another wonderful event. So. Mm. uh As y'all know, my brother here is Libra Man. His birthday just passed. Thank you. Uh, So happy birthday officially to Polo on uh, on the podcast episode one seventy four is Polo's birthday podcast episode two. I appreciate that, man. And shout out to your wife. Your her birthday just happened yesterday. So yeah, we had a good time. My sister, I love that. I love that. Yeah, and shout out to everybody that that wished me happy birthday. I don't, you know, I don't post anything about my birthday. It doesn't. That means. You know, it was just another day on the calendar for me. But everybody that said happy birthday to me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, I appreciate y'all. The shit meant a lot. Uh, 31, man. 31. Dirty one, as I, as I like to call it. I feel good, though. I feel good. You should, bro. I do feel good. You ain't even hit your peak yet. Nah. I'm on, <laughs> on my way to the tippity top, and I'm only halfway up, bro. All right. <laughs> Let's get it. Let's get it. Um... Let's start off with some. Uh, let's start off with the uh, with some Twitter questions, man. We got quite oh, a few. Yeah. We haven't asked for questions in a long time, but we got a, quite a few from our friends over at uh, Mike Check Waifu on Twitter. Make sure y'all follow us there. <laughs> Sorry, Tell, for making fun of your manga. That's okay. You good, bro? <laughs> I just like to fuck yeah. around. You know, I be like to fuck around. You are. I'm good. I, I I love it. But you know we can do this. We being real, that was real. I think it was very real. Hey, I could listen, listen. I bet, I bet to you it looked like fucking fire. Okay, check check our Twitter out for the conversation I'm referring to. But to everybody else that don't know what it is, it just it looked like a black figure with a leg out 
and then that was it. Everything else was just like scribbles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it's fire though I bet it's fire I know it's fire Because I trust your judgment Anyway Let's start off with a question <laughs> Let's start off with a question From my boy Huey TJ At Huey TJ on Twitter He says What's a good uh, What has good uh, Good intros What anime has good intros Wow I'm dyslexic <laughs> today uh, And good outros He said what has good intros And good good outros And it doesn't have to be Just one show And he says Favorite ca- Favorite shows uh, For character design Listen, Huey, look up. I'm gonna do it for the character design first. I'm gonna answer that one first. Look up the show called Orisuki. Orisuki's character design looks so fucking sweet. It's a slice of life anime. Um, if you're not familiar, shout out to the bench, the uh, evil villain in that show. Very, very funny uh, slice of life show. Um, very interesting characters, but the, the art style for that show, as far as like how they draw their female characters with how their eye design is, it looks so good, man. It looks so good. Something about that character design to me looks amazing. And then as far as what has, uh, what anime has good intros, I talked about this last week, I think, but my hero intro suck, Dick. Um, yeah. <laughs> they're all so, <laughs> they're all so fucking bad. I can't stand my hero intros, but I digress. Um, uh, a show that was terrible It was called uh, I think it was called F18 F18 <laughs> intro was so fire But the show was so bad It was so bad Huey It was so fucking terrible And then good outros I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna give you one from uh, This se- uh, last season actually Vermilion and Goat Has to be my favorite mm-hmm. outro That that was uh, That's from a new show That shit was good It was like this This chill R&B Kind of Kind of vibe to it It was uh, definitely my kind of shit um, my my favorite opening and outro right now is um, Link Click. Oh, that's fire! Good choice. They had a wonderful intro, but then the outro. You know how they do it. Yeah, yeah. You just, you just dealt with all this trauma and action in this in, the, <laughs> in this anime, and then the outro is smooth, kind of so like smooth. vibe. Yes. Uh, Link Click had a great one. Um, I did invade it. Had a great outro. Yes, bro. I forgot about you. <clears throat> But if we're gonna go with this season, uh, Mobile Suit Gundam The Witch from Mercury has a pretty good intro, too. Dope, dope. Um, man. character design wise, uh, right now, I think like Fire Force is mm. like inspiring me right now. So, it's Fire so Force, I love it, and it's, it's always the intensity with like how thick the lines get around the character when something yes. happens, yes, and then uh, the Tell eyes because anything where those eyes come through, like kind of like what you said, the eyes of those characters really mean a lot. Fire Force when those eyes hit, they bright and then it's like it's a whole different aura and vibe. So yeah, Fire Force right now got me. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. You know, I jumped right into that question and it almost skipped the most one of the most important things of the show. What is your episode of the week this week, Montel? No, nah, don't judge me because I let me let me check real quick just to check my notes. Show that my episode, thing. All right. Uh, my episode of the week last week was Eminence and Shadows, and my episode of the week this week is Eminence and Shadows. <laughs> Very two, yes, yes. Two very good episodes. We're gonna talk about that. The spoiler I have of the show. I can't, I forget, fucking wait. And my last week, uh, episode of the week was uh, more than a married couple, but not lovers. And my episode this week is more than a married couple, but not lovers. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, this show is so fucking good, dude. It's so good. It's giving me everything I want for my slice of life plus more. And the intrigue is there. The they already diving into some wait, some, some uh, emotional confusion. And I Let's love go. that. It's episode two, bro. It's episode two. More than a married couple, but not lovers is fantastic. I I love it. I absolutely love it. My biggest surprise this season so far is fucking wonderful. Thank you, Huey CJ, for giving us that question. That was a good one, man. Oh, shout out to our bruv Ash. Over there across the pond talking about he rewatching season one so he can uh watch season two of uh one of our favorite shows in our top 10 86 what a dude man i swear <laughs> I'm just we, you, we definitely love you bro <laughs> <laughs> the mech man uh he, 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 like you say he's just busy man. he's just busy you gotta all be right. all the work you do all right there's a couple of questions i want to save for like some uh segue purposes some polo way purposes so i'm gonna save those uh for that um okay Let's do this. Let's do Vash. Vash is, 
Vash step or Vash D from uh, Anime Lately. He says, how is this year wrapping up for you in anime? Do you have a top 10 list yet or are you still finishing up some anime of this year? So as you know, we, we cover seasonal anime. We kind of go along with the season. So whenever seasonal shows end is, is the end. Do we have a top 10 list yet? Um, No, no, we do that at the end of the year fully. But I will say this. 2022, it's pretty easy. It's easily the uh, discernible on whatever anime of the year is and, that, and this, this kind of polo ways into our next question for one <laughs> this uh next question it segues way perfectly into to the next question uh from uh and nikki miso sorry if i'm butchering your name i'm just i'm just a dumb in america and i know you're you, you know you over there in in, in japan and you and you speak Japanese, so forgive me for butchering your name. But she says, "Well, have I not been on the show yet?" Question mark. Question mark. Question mark. Great question. Great question. Why haven't a lot of people been on the show yet? I don't know. I would. I don't have an answer to that. We. I don't know. It's we always we always make guests like an event, you know. It's, and we always want to bring guests on when we have something tangible for that guest. So, for example, we had. Blanime on for our Made in Abyss review because they decided they haven't seen Made in Abyss yet and they hear us they heard us talking about it and said you know we gonna watch it so I'm like hey this is the perfect opportunity to get Blanime uh our other favorite anime podcast on our podcast to review mm-hmm. one of our favorite shows Made in Abyss it was it was awesome then we had uh Jujutsu Kaisen we had Noxy from sorry for that. Fast race car going around the background. I heard that. Need to be in the background. Need to be Houston coming out soon. <laughs> yeah, we had Noxie on, and like that was a fantastic episode because he's a huge fan of JJK, and so were we. So we had him on for our review. That was a fucking brilliant episode. That was the last time we had any guests on our episode, which was last year. So we definitely gotta mm-hmm. see about getting more guests on. I digress. But she says, okay, serious question: Do you have a uh, contender for anime of the year? Uh, uh, summertime rendering. That's easy. It's can, easy. Yeah, I could speak on the behalf of both of us and say Summertime Render will probably guarantee be our anime of the year this year. Um, it's very hard to see anything else. Absolutely. Very, very hard. Um, but thank you so much for the question. We appreciate you for always supporting us too. You're absolutely incredible and we love you to death. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let's see where else we want to go here. Let's go to our, uh, our our brother Rob over there at Dad Needs to Talk Podcast. I love the Dad Needs to Talk Podcast. He says, why are y'all so cool? <laughs> Good question. I don't know. Why are you so cool? Why are you exactly feelings mutual? I appreciate the variety of shows and discussions y'all bring to the community. Even when Polo is slandering my favorite sports anime. Sorry, brother. Uh, he says I have a couple of chill slice of life recommendations for this season uh, for your <laughs> listeners. He says, uh, "Bachi the Rock" and DIY Do It Yourself. Two slice of life shows. One of them being a musical show. I would love you to death. That needs to talk podcast, aka Rob. But musical anime is neither tales nor my <laughs> cup of tea. Um, but for our listeners, check those two out if you're into slice of life anime. We appreciate that, Rob. A uh, funny thing on top of that, really quick though, yeah, it's it's wild how much we love music, but musical anime it just got it's different. Yes. Like uh, what was that called? Tact OP Destiny. Like I like it, but it didn't feel like the music was centered around like the actual anime some True. of the music just kind of seemed out of place they using you know symphonies and and stuff like that it just don't seem in place but when it's real good music in anime like parasite the maximum wasn't a, a, a musical anime but the music it had a whole soundtrack made in the abyss made in the abyss yeah like bleach made in the abyss like we know these sounds so well because not because it's a musical anime but because of how they interjected the proper sounds or proper move yes, into those moments. Yes, and when they did it. See, we love music and anime. We don't love music anime. I think that's I think that's <clears> the, <throat> the moral of that story. <laughs> but thank you, Rob, for those recommendations. And why are we so cool? I, I don't I didn't think I thought we were just pretty normal, you know? <laughs> trying to be like you. Yeah, just two brothers talking about anime. That's it. And trying to bring a different discussion to the uh to the anime verse, if you will. Which I feel like we do a very good job of. Yeah, always that's what we try for mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. let's go over to our bro Ked the Pro over at from Chaotic Culture Podcast shout out to Chaotic Culture Podcast actually love that podcast too it's fucking legit um, mm-hmm. 
He says, first off, y'all continue to body this shit. Keep putting out quality work. We will, brother. We will. He says, question, outside of Parallel World Pharmacy, which isekai this year has been the best or second best if Parallel World Pharmacy is number one? So, for example, Dating Sim, Black Summoner, Overlord, Skeleton Knight, Land of Liddell, Greatest Demon Lord, etc. What a great question for a podcast that absolutely loves isekais. And forgive me for my stuffy nose, uh, allergies or whatever. Um, but very tough, man. I Right now, Parallel World Pharmacy is at the top for me. But two episodes in, two episodes in. And I'm talking about new. I'm talking about new. We're not talking about old. <laughs> Okay, because no, okay, if, okay. if it's Overlord, <laughs> tell gave you the craziest face. If y'all watching the video version, you can get early on the podcast on a Patreon version <laughs> of this podcast. He looked at me like I was crazy because I just said Overlord. <laughs> yeah, because I looked at it, Overlord was or no, the Rising of Sugar was the first thing, but I see Overlord was the first thing. I was on, like, ain't no way, bro. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking about. Parallel World Pharmacy is good though. It is really good. So new wise, let's, yeah. let me just. Eminence and Shadows is starting off really fucking strong. Okay. Yeah. It, did it top Parallel World Pharmacy yet? Nah, not yet, not yet, not yet. Because we still got a lot of uh, still got a lot of anime yet. It's a lot of episodes of that. It's twenty episodes, so I'm looking forward to that. But Black Summoner was really good. I will probably call right now at this particular point while Eminence and Shadows is still cooking. Parallel World Pharmacy, Black Summoner. Uh, again, not counting Overlord. We talking new here. But I mean, if it's if it's all all around, it's Overlord. I mean, it's easily Overlord. Overlord was fucking sick this season. Yeah, <sighs> it's got to be parallel world, world pharmacy. Then I'm I'm definitely going next to uh, Black Summoner because it's just hard to pick anything else around that. Right, Dayton sounds Atlanta, cool though. In Atlanta, Liddell, that was last last year, right? The end of last year. Oh, was it? I could, could be mistaken. Because in Atlanta, Liddell, it, it does count for 2022. So I mean, I guess technically that one would be a good one too. Top five, funny one. Sheesh. So yeah, I'm gonna go with those three. Okay. Yeah, that works for me. I love it. I love it. I love you, Ked Pro. Thank you so much for supporting us, bro. You've I'm glad you caught up to the episodes. He listened to I don't y'all don't have to do that, you know. Just jump in, <laughs> jump in when you jump in. You don't gotta go all the way back to our old old episodes if you're behind. Semi sensei. Um <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where he is right now. I gotta. I gotta tweet at him to make sure he's doing okay and he's not lost. <laughs> uh, let's see. We got some other dope stuff. Dope stuff. Let's see. Where shall we go next? Forgive me. It, hey, I'm gonna just let y'all know. By the way, it's gonna be some editing in this podcast, but it's not gonna be a lot because I gotta do it all tonight. Yeah, it's just a, a quick little gap there. <laughs> it's gonna be some. It's, it's gonna, gonna be it's some gaps. <laughs> you gonna see me doing half a wave, and it's gonna jump skip and it's gonna be the rest of the wave. <laughs> True. Uh, wait, wait. That's if y'all watch the YouTube video. Go to, yeah, check us out on YouTube at Mike Check Waifu Waifu. You know, stop by, show some love. You know, see our faces. Make sure our fashion is on point because I ain't really trying to be fashionable. I'm just yeah, I never vamping for polo. Me either. I never, I never really be fashionable on a podcast. But when you talk about my stream at twitch.tv slash Polo Born Fly, I'm pretty fresh there all the time. So make sure y'all come check that out as well. All right, I guess I mean the last question here goes to Sam. Shout out to Sam who's always coming through the stream. Sam, what's up? Sam is uh, who runs the Anime Lately accounts. So we're gonna go over his question because his question segues into our next topic of discussion. Um. The month of anticipation finally came cl- uh, to a close. Bleach anime and the Chainsaw Man anime premiere last week. The two biggest anime people were looking forward to to seeing. How did they? Co- how did you come out of it? Were you satisfied from the first episode? Now let's segue into Chainsaw Man first. Bleach talk last. Chainsaw Man first. Did it? Uh, did it come out? Were you satisfied with the first episode, Montel? Yes, I will definitely say I was satisfied with the first episode of Chainsaw Man. It was to me, it was better than the first first manga chapter. I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. This is why, and this is this goes to fucking share my case as to why the fuck I just shouldn't read manga. 
because <laughs> manga ruins <laughs> ruins shit for me. Listen, I, look, I, I like I say all the time. I like Chainsaw Man. Find the manga. The manga's cool. It, it was a nice read. I was just into. I was I, at some point. I got into it just for the fights. Everything else seems like mute bullshit to me. But watching this first episode, the emotional connection I finally got to have with Denji was just something I didn't have in the manga at all. Reading it, I fucking love it, bro. This, I mean, it was one hundred thirty thousand dollars a episode, so <laughs> you could fucking tell. You could fucking tell this episode cost a lot of money. <laughs> Yo, funny, funny enough, I was telling Monique about it, and and she saw and was like, "Yep, that looked like they they paying one hundred thirty thousand dollars an episode." <laughs> yeah, they the motherfuckers ain't playing, but I will say. I came out of it very, very satisfied. The voice acting is fire, absolutely fire. Yeah. I now, now I feel like tell because now I'm looking forward to the fights that that I saw in the manga and what the fuck map are gonna do with it, bro. Like, and <laughs> unbelievable. I don't, I don't care what Polo got to say about CGI. I love no, it, the it was CGI great. and this shit. Perfect. Okay, because th- this is why. And this is this I'm satisfied with the first episode. Chance in my case as to why the fuck I just shouldn't read. This goes to fucking share. I, at some point, I got into it just for the fights. Every, that's, CGI. That's what it looked like when you put money into it, bro. That's exactly what it looked like. Because normally you use CGI as a as a shortcut because it's quicker to animate than. I mean, computers are easier to manage than drawn out scene for scene. So that's why they use the CGI. But nah, man, this CGI was a compliment, not a hindrance. You know. Mm-hmm. It complemented the episode brilliantly. I mean, the pacing was so much better than the manga's pacing. There was some stuff that I, I, I do remember that has changed from it, but mm-hmm. I think it was kind of for the better. Like, they, yeah, it's uh, almost like they gave us more detail. No, it was less. It was still less because, it was less? It, yeah, because the way the dog, the devil dog, talked to him, it wasn't. It was more. It was darker than what it was. They made it seem uh, a little glowy, and and it was it was short because the, the devil dog was like, yeah, like you know, make a contract with me. You know what I'm saying? It was like it was like a I can bring you back kind of conversation in the manga. It was it was more deep. It was like more fleshed out when it came to that. Mm-hmm. But like it was just like a short. Hey, I want to see your dreams kind of thing, and it was cutesy, which was fine. It worked well for the pacing of the show. But the I mean, manga, they also didn't show the you know the head. Yeah, true, <laughs> true. And they didn't show a lot, a lot, a lot of that, but it was great. It was great. Again, this sucks. It sucks for me personally because I would have loved to came in this knowing nothing, and then like watching how it ends because you know everybody that read the manga knows how it ends. So can I be excited? I'm excited just to see the way it looks, and that's about yeah. it. I mean, I I understand that. I'm I'm very excited for it because I I feel like. And I guess this is just how I look at it. As a manga reader, this is still a new experience for me. You know, mm. like the story. I, yes, I know the story, but I didn't get to watch it. You know, yeah, I uh, can't separate the two. I guess and that's it, it'd be it would be different. Like if this was Twin Star Exorcist, and I guess Twin Star Exorcist, because I'll never get to see what I actually watched or read yeah. animated because they got it like that. So I can appreciate it this way. You know, yeah. I for me, it's just. It just ruins my. It, it tempers my. It tempers my expectations, which is a good thing. Because if, I guess, if I didn't read it, then looking at the internet, I edited, this should have be. <laughs> the expectations would be through the roof. Um, but if you think your expectations were through the roof, you think it 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 satisfied those expectations still though? It, it would have been. It would have been through the roof. Did it live up to what I think it would have been if I would have just been on the internet and not you know read? Probably not. Mm. Probably not. You know, I, I would say look pretty, and I'm interested, and I'm intrigued. But all the hype that I saw didn't equal what I got. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Yeah. I will say this though. I'm looking forward to more though. I'm looking forward to more. They're doing. I think they're doing two core, the two core thing. So it's only twelve episodes. I think they're doing the two core thing. I'm not sure. I'll look that up. But yeah, I hope. I hope they're doing a two core thing because if it's just 12, I guess they could wrap up them 100 tappers in 12. Maybe they could. they not going to do that. Ain't you know, no they, way. Yeah, ain't no way. Ain't no way. They're going to make this for all this work. Is that, that first episode was maybe two chapters. Yeah, it was about two chapters. You're right. No, you're right. You're right. I know. I think I know where they're probably going to end. 
which will be fire, which will actually be kind of fire. Yep. And then season two will be the uh, verb- uh what's that called? Reverbrio in whatever the fuck it's called. Yeah, they'll probably get past like five or six chapters in this next episode for sure. Interesting. Yeah, I'm, I'm with that because I because they got the when you think about it, they didn't come to the you know what I'm gonna stop. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna stop. Uh, yeah. Next up, man. Cue the music, Polo. It's back, baby. Yes. Hashtag Bleach Talk is back. Listen, we for those of you who aren't aware, we did a whole rewatch of the entire Bleach series, no filler included, except for the uh, Zang Bakto art. Um, yeah, that was a wonderful experience. Absolutely wonderful. So much fun to rewatch Bleach. I fell in love with it all over again because I only seen it again up until like the Soul Society arc and I only saw bits and pieces because back then I was like always out and about and partying and doing whatever. But <laughs> <laughs> but legit, man, it tell when I tell you when this shit came on and I saw it like when when our folks came onto the screen, Ichigo uh uh, the chick, you know, Inoe, whatever her name is, and Chad, bro. I chills, man. Chills. I actually physically yep. got chills. So, funny enough, I literally took notes, and, and my note says Bleach. Bankai slash gets to go 10 show gave me chills. Mm-hmm. Bro, I'm, I felt the same. It was like something about it. Like, it just hit different. Bro. The presence, the, the music, I got chills. I was like, man. <laughs> it's insane. Don't you go pull up, bro? It's back. Bleach is back. But it, it was nice, man. It's nice to see, you know, this first episode. So, the first two um, episodes. <laughs> first two. That's true. First two episodes. So how, how did you feel about the initial first episode, that intro? Like, the, we, we take the whole first episode as an intro. Intro. How did you feel about it? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Because they, I don't know what's going on with this pacing. I don't know if it's going to be like 100-something episodes. I don't know how many episodes it's going to be. But the pacing was, it was spot. It was like, here, we're here. This is what's happening. And mm-hmm. for it to happen as cleanly as it did, for one, uh, Periot Studio, I don't know what the fuck y'all did. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where y'all got this money from, but y'all are killing it right now. Keep this shit up, please. Please keep it, it up. It's bleach. You know they gotta have they Bruh. gotta have the money for bleach. It was pretty to look at. The act the little bit of action we did get looked fucking phenomenal. They even used CGI for the uh for the hollows, hollows. That, that, that pulled up and it looked good, man. I'm like, yo, what the, the fuck is this? Didn't seem clunky or nothing, bro. Nothing, bro. It was it was smooth. The one thing I will say this, everybody looks longer. They all look a little lot lot lengthier, you know, like lengthier. I mean, which is weird. Very. It, it's, been, it's been like a year, right? Something like that. I think so. I think so. Everybody's real long though. They, like, not just from a a physicality standpoint, but like lanky, kind of like weirdly, um, weirdly drawn, but super slim. Maybe it's yeah. a, a slight stylistic change. Like they just wanted mm-hmm. to stretch people out. Yeah, man. Maybe it is. Maybe it is. I like it though. I'm not. I'm not against it. Um. We just emphasizing them long legs, y'all, y'all. <laughs> exactly. But everybody I, got stiletto, stilettos on. I will tell you this though: after watching the first episode, the first thing I said to myself was like, "Fuck, I want to watch this dub, bro. I want to watch it dub so bad." Because then I know I will be, I'll be caught in this nostalgia, and I will feel back into it again. Because this is this is my first time experience Bleach sub. Just to be honest, like I didn't watch any subs whatsoever uh, during our rewatch, or even as uh, a younger lad. So watching it. Uh, subbed it was fine like the voices are, were fine they were good enough they they all worked for who they were but it just didn't feel like my bleach you know as selfish as that sounds which I'm you know I'm allowed to say that right yeah <laughs> and I wanted dub so fucking bad but after watching those first two episodes there's no way I can I can be behind not um not even gonna lie to you I, I agree with you on the dub oh uh, shit especially because I feel like Mob Psycho spoiled me they, it spoiled me yeah, I forgot I watched Mob Psycho too. Uh, yeah. To be fair though, um, a little side tangent to Mob Psycho. I'm not gonna cut the music off of Bleach Talk, but yeah, I, you know, maybe I don't like Mob Psycho no more, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching like, did I? In the two in the past, what two years, two and a half years since I've been since I've watched Mob Psycho season two. I'm yeah. like, this is kind of whack. I mean, I'm kind of, 
I'm bored. You watched Bob's Hackers season two last year. Yeah, okay, okay. Maybe maybe I grew up during the year or something. I don't know. Maybe I'm jaded now. I don't know what the fuck my excuse is, but I just wasn't. These first two episodes, I'm like, ugh. I mean, it it, I don't think they got into the meat and potatoes of what right. it normally is. Very true. I got you. I got to let it cook. Mob is still in his uh, figuring himself out phase. Yeah. You know. True, true. Well, he'll hit he'll hit 100% next episode. Don't worry. <laughs> but back to Bleach. Mm hmm. It was great to see everybody's intros. Yes. Great to see uh, uh, Ichigo. I guess he's not much older, like I said, but great to see him kind of like in his element. And then everybody in his house again is funny. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, the one thing that made me laugh. What's it's that? On, and the first thing I, when it when it happened, when I saw them pull up, I'm like, damn, they still fucking up Karakura Town. Like it just <laughs> like it just ain't the living, breathing town. Like they just don't give a fuck. They be blowing buildings up and shit <laughs> constantly, bro. Hey yo, I, I, I'm saying he said get go tennis show, and all we see is blue fucking spear energy go up in the air. It's just like okay, so you leveled the building. But then I remember, <laughs> I remember them explaining how like the spiritual energy doesn't actually affect the world of the living like that. In some cases, I'm not sure how they Whoa. tried. To, I can't remember how they tried to explain it. Yeah, it but, still did though, because you remember back in the day with. When we were watching it, that dude like, with the super long range thing, he was cutting buildings in half and shit. Yeah, and like some sometimes, like it was just being visible to the naked to the human eye. Like it was just see the damage, but they don't know where it came from. And they would use excuses like earthquake or, or you know whatever bullshit that they would use for for the excuse of that. But I always think about it like they always fucking up this time. Like I know the fight with eyes and they were in like a different version of the town right but like yo why y'all always a copy of Kar- karakura town but why y'all always fucking leveling this place you know, they, they high key gotta have like just just on the regular like life insurance just for like <laughs> existing and even life insurance is like ex- existence insurance living in this town <laughs> your deductible is a hundred dollars because you're gonna pay one twice a, twice a day yeah exactly <laughs> um so uh, what did you think about what happened to S- Squad One, dude? In episode one, bro. Uh, I love that they brought drama that quick like that. But yes, yes. an antagonist uh, almost instantly. To find out how Squad One went down like that, and well, we found out more exactly like even the time frame that they went down in to go down like that. Is wild. 182 uh, seconds. Yeah, that exactly. That's exactly what I was saying. 182 Ooh. seconds to go down. They took out all of Squad One. Yeah. Nah, I, bro. That's some demon time. That's and this is exactly what Bleach does so well, and they always done as well. The antagonist is always so fucking scary, bro. They're so scary. When they show the Quincy King in the first episode, and he cut off dude arm, I'm like, yo, what the <laughs> fuck just happened? You know what I'm saying, and and I don't I don't quite understand like why they're evil because I've always thought Quincy's was also for good, but I also remembered after watching episode two that Quincy's are pretty much the same as the um, uh, the Soul Society, but a little they bit erase more, Hollows entirely. They, exactly, they're a little bit more um, prominent, I guess. I don't they know. raise souls and the hollows balance them, or the soul society balances them. A- absolutely, I absolutely love the introduction of how how this war starts, of how even even them giving us the lore of it at the beginning was fucking fire. It was so clean, so smoothly done. Um, but episode two, bro, episode two was uh, yikes, man. Was was Bleach always this violent? What do you mean? Was this always, is the same anime that Kimpachi is a part of. But they wasn't chopping off heads like this, though, bro. Heads wasn't nah. exploding. Nah, it, that was wild, though. <laughs> shit wild <laughs> as hell. I, I was watching this scene, I'm like, he really just talking to him, and it's a whole head on the floor. Gone, bro. Like, arms, like, they, all the, no expense was spared on the blood. Like, the blood is there. Okay. Oh, when the when the Quincy King blue dude face back yes, and he watches bro. his head open up right there. I was yes. like, okay. Not not no so his head didn't open up, his head disappeared. <laughs> he fucking <laughs> Thanos snapped his head off, bro. I'm like, yo, what the fuck is happening with Bleach right now? I loved it though. I absolutely love yeah. it. Definitely more dull. I think they said something about it being more uh They're not gonna censor it. Yes, more violent, more um ours is wait, wait, wait. 
didn't Cartoon Network get shut down? Am I misremembering what I saw? No, on Car- okay. Cartoon Network was purchased by Warner Brothers, which Warner Brothers have always been on Cartoon Network. Yeah, now it's just a fi- officially under the blanket. Okay, Cartoon so Network is not going anywhere. You still gonna have it. Just Warner Bros. want their money now. That's okay. all. The internet just being doofus is then. Okay, of so course. I, I just need to be careful with what I glance at on the internet. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately, yes. So I'm like, I was thinking like, okay, so Adult Swim is still going to be there, so they're probably definitely a hundred thousand percent going to play Bleach again, um, because they've been fucking running Bleach even still to this day, I think. But <laughs> with that, with that being said, man, let's uh, let's do a gut check on 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 this on this second episode. We love the fact that he's in uh, Awako Mundo, right? Mm-hmm. What do you think is going to happen in Waco Mundo? That so, so here's my perception. I, I thought of this immediately when um I was watching it, and I'm also going to say I kind of hate this tactic here. But they introduce something that immediately shuts down Ichigo. What Ichigo is most known for his bankai gets to go ah, ten show. Ah yes, I I hate the nerf kind of thing where it's like oh you got to find out something to immediately combat this. They did so. Yeah. He, He's they're gonna he's gonna get into a fight, and they are either gonna take his his bankai, or uh, he's not gonna use it out of fear that he thinks he can lose his bankai, and mm. he's gonna lose. So I think he's gonna do that, and then he's gonna try and figure out at the end of the episode some kind of train enrichment or something. <laughs> I'm not trying to make it seem corny because I love Bleach, but that's just I see it coming, and if it happens, it happens. No, they just can, they can make it good, yeah. but I would, I would, I would like to see them do a little bit more detail their own their own path on this. Yeah, I like. I like I just, so the thing with what you just said though is it's kind of contradictory because what they show was they showed exactly the nerf in episode one where the guy tried to steal his bunkai. It didn't work. So how we also know that he was in a wrong car. Who is not a Quincy using a Quincy yeah, tool? Interesting, interesting. Now he's about to fight an actual Quincy. So, who, you think, so you think the Quincy, if you're an actual Quincy, you can still steal the Bankai? Well, I think that this dude was in a wrong car who we just saw one of the Quincy generals or whatever take down three of the toughest of Ron Car on the Bell. So I think that this guy is not on that level. So I'm going to assume that this Quincy. And I'm not. I don't think he's stronger than Ichigo, but I think if Ichigo don't have his bankai, he can shut down Ichigo. Mm. Well, what we learned, and the first outro showed this, which was a beautiful fucking outro for Bleach. By the way, they showed all the evolutions of of Ichigo. He has more forms, you know. That's not just bankai. So yeah, but his bankai form is still based around hollows, which Quincy specializes in fighting hollows. Yeah, but. There was another form. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? The the long hair don't care, Ichigo. I'm not sure if that's the uh, hollow version or that's that's a bankai. Bankai release. Oh, this is bankai release. Mm. Yeah, I don't think I'm worried though. I don't think I'm worried. I, I'm think- I, I don't. I think he got it, bro. I just. I still think though. Yeah, yeah. I don't think. He, I don't think he's gonna be the one to blow him back to, to knock him down a peg or two. Maybe he is though, because you know how they like to do. Yeah, you might be right exactly on the money, money. <laughs> That's crazy. Because they, they like to do that in Bleach. It's how it happens every season of Bleach where there's the start. <laughs> you there's a meet villain, he meets somebody, get his ass stomped out with, even though he got all this power now. Wait, what's the what's the new power he got at the end of whoa, I'm hearing an echo. Hearing full bring. Audio? Full bring. He could use his full bring stuff. Um, I mean, yeah, but here here's what I think outside of that. They they got to do exactly what they always do. If Ichigo win this, somebody else gonna pop up and beat him down, like how he tied with Grimjaw kind oh, of yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, valid, valid. It, it, it'll be like that, or Ichigo got, Ichigo got to lose. There's something like that. True, true that. Woo, interesting stuff, man. I agree with you though. The nerf is weird. Um, all right, man. Let's uh, let's move on to our new segment before we get to know my. Ooh. Before we go to the spoiler talk, now this new segment is special. Uh, I don't know what to call it. Let's let's we'll think of a name later. Twitter at us at Mike Check Waifu if you got a name for us. But what we're gonna do is we're still gonna incorporate the random number generator. The way we're gonna do is that 
I'm going to roll a ra- well, one of us each week is going to roll the random number generator between eight and 22. Whatever number that lands on, each of us has to give a rec- anime recommendation from that year. Okay. So I want to roll the random number generator since this was my tell idea. Give us a name for this. By the way, we, uh, we would greatly appreciate it if you guys would help us out there. But random number generator. Now it could, it could be repeat numbers. It don't matter. So eight to 22. I'm going to head and roll the random number generator and see what we get. <clears throat> 19, 2019. We each have to recommend an anime from 2019. All right. Um, let's see here. Let's see here. Where do I want to go? Okay. <laughs> What's that? What you got? If you don't, yeah, you want me to go first? Yeah, you go first. I am going to go with uh, a, a very easy one for us to go with Astro Lost in Space. Mm. Damn, that's crazy. 2019 is when this podcast started, too. That's crazy. Yeah, Astro Lost in Space is a very easy one. Very, very good one, Till. And I'm going to recommend one that uh, a lot of people have seen that I think more people should see. And that's Quintessential Quintuplets. Yes. Quintessential Quintuplets is one of my favorite sites of life. It has my uh, my favorite waifu of all time, Miku. Um, Quintessential Quintuplets is special. It's a very, very special slice of life that I think everybody should watch for sure. Let, let me uh, let me change my recommendation. What? Because Master Lost in Space? Yeah, because I feel like that's not fair. We always recommend Ash Lost in Space. If you and if you're 174 episodes in, you know we recommend Ash Lost in Space. Mm. Um, I'm gonna say uh, Bungo Stray Dogs. I know it's pretty popular, but you know, from Ash Lost in Space to Bungo Stray Dogs, everybody already knows. Everybody already knows Ash Lost in Space. They love it. If you if you this far into Mike Check White Food White Food, you already know we recommend it. Mattel Ash Williams. Lost. Bungo Stray Dogs is the most is one of the most popular anime in the verse right now, bro. How can right. you recommend that one to anybody? He's a guy, he's a guy cheap magician. <laughs> Get this recommendation. <laughs> you don't even like that one that much. That's crazy. I, I, wait, I never said I didn't like that. You recommended it to me. Okay. All right. Or or just just a heads up, Huey. Or Suki came out in 2019. So check there out you go. check out that character design there. It's, uh, it's really good. Even just looking Wait, at them. Hey, quintessential quintuplets. Uh, is that what you said? Yeah. Ain't that one of the most popular? <laughs> no, it's not. That's the crazy part. It's popular in like Japan. I, only, I feel like I always hear about, okay, you're right. You're it's popular, only popular right? in Japan, not here, which is sad. It makes me so sad because that's why I haven't got my fucking quintessential quintuplet movie yet because it's not popular here. It's pissing me off. Anyway. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's hey, a sore spot. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know what y'all think this topic should be uh, or this the segment should be um, before we take our break. We'll be right back after these.
And welcome back to episode 174 of My Check Waifu Waifu. Welcome to the spoiler talk segment of the show. If you uh watch My Hero Eminence and Shadows in uh why is my memory so Blue bad? Blue Lock. Stick around. We are going to spoil those. First, starting off with My Hero Episode 3 of Season 6. My Hero Episode 3, Season 6 tale, it continues to live up to uh, to greatness, finally. Another <laughs> great, another great, great, great episode for me, personally. This episode. Really? Absolutely. fucking Luli. I forgot that I was watching this until it was over. I'm like, I'm watching it. <laughs> I was I was so I was so enthralled with what the fuck was happening. I'm like, damn, damn, oh shit! You know what I'm saying? Because it was it was Hawks, it was versus twice. It, Dobby pulled up. I don't I don't know I don't understand how people can love him so much. He's a fucking demon. Um, Who twice? No, or Dobby. Dobby, bro. Yeah, he's a demon. Absolute fucking demon. Like I know somebody personally who has Dobby tattooed on their whole thigh. Like a whole picture of Dobby. Dobby is raw though, bro. Come on, you know, bro. He's, you know. <laughs> Come on. You know, he's, he's, I, I, I get it. I get it. Cause you know, the the I think a lot of the hype around Dobby is the mystery, right? Like we know who and what Dobby is, but it's still the mystery behind Dobby. It makes him cool. Sure. And he's fire. Fire characters are instantly loved. If we knew nothing about Rengoku, everybody would still fuck hit with Rengoku heavy because he was fire. Yeah, um, sure, but I, you know, so I don't know. I, I know his backstory as well. It was kind of you kind of know if you have common sense, right? I mean, like it's it's plain story, as yeah. yes, it's they, plain. They as, gave it away last season. Yeah, it's plain as day, bro. It's as plain as day. Um. Even before that, <laughs> to be honest, but True. I digress. It's watching. I'm watching Hawks fight twice was crazy, and watching listen and listen. They gave us. They didn't give us. They did give us backstory, right? Hey, so you want to? I don't know what's going on with your headphones. Are your headphones all the way on your head? Like, I just hear a crazy echo. Again, we're not cutting this out. I'm leaving it all in. Yeah, I'm Look, good. But it was seeing twice backstory, the way they did it this time that was so different from what they did in previous seasons is that this time they let it ride. They let it ride. It didn't stop in the middle of a, of something and then just in the middle of that something throw in a little piece of it and then go back to it and then stop in that middle of something and then go back. They, it was all a part of the encompassing the encompassing fight and it was special, man. It was special. Mm-hmm. I fucking love seeing Hawks pop the fuck off. Um, and then when Dobby pulled up, like, yo, you let your emotions get ahead of you, which was weird because it seemed like he was inside of Hawks' head, which I didn't quite like. Um, it was very strange for him to say what he said at the perfect moment where, no, no, Hawks said that out loud. I take that back. I'm sorry. I'm wrong. Because Hawks said that out loud. I don't let my emotions get involved. And then Dobby must have been waiting in the cut and he heard him say that. That's why he referred to it again. After he mm-hmm. pulled up on him, so I, I'm, I digress. I apologize for that uh, misconception, but I fucking loved it, bro. It was so good. This episode was so good. It was so well done. I had no idea. Like I knew Hawks was supposed to be raw, but like how he used his feathers in this, it just Jeez. seemed like like it was. <clears throat> Can't no regular person fight Hawks. <laughs> like like to see what he did. He even even after what he did it twice who. Arguably has some of the most terrifying quirks in this show. Just to be able to reproduce or copy any person, anything, and their quirk gets copied along with it is scary. You know? And he just got over his fear and he can literally just do it on end. Um, which makes him the the, the scariest one because if he just creates a bunch of Shigarakis, it's over. Mm. Um But in general the 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 way they did this, the way they approached it, was crazy, and I I really enjoyed this way better than I read. I, I actually did in the manga as well, um, and to see Hawks go toe to toe with Dobby like that, knowing Dobby is literally his weakness, was dope too. True. Um, I thought I, they were going to do a lot more because I I know they already did some uh, backstory, but yeah, the, just to see how they actually did twice his backstory well, how we got to see him kind of disintegrate. In to, um, Toga's arms. Uh, and how, how do you, 
You can, go ahead, you, go ahead. You, can you can go ahead and spoil me, but because I, I don't really care that much. But is this, is this actually the end of Twice or no? Yeah, he did. He did. Oh, did. oh, he did. Did that's crazy. I thought he was gonna do a lot more than that. Then okay. Nah, nah, he all the way did. Gone. Yeah. Okay. Dead as fuck. Mud. All right. This is. I mean, it's not the first character we've seen die, but this is the first character we've seen die right here in action. I think like this. Yeah, yeah. You know, I can't wait to see everybody else get bodied too. Um, I still, I don't know this. Tell know this. He, he's read the manga, but I still think the bunny chick gonna die. Um, am I okay with it? Yeah, because I don't know her. I don't really know much about her at all. Period. So, so your 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 optimal cosplay for her is gonna be ashes. Got it. it yep. Make sure that urn is filled. Um, <laughs> just just dress up as an urn and put some bunny ears on top of it. I don't fucking know, but. Uh, <laughs> I do think I, th- I do think because as soon as Sugar Rocky wake up, it's it's fucking, it's it's a, it's going to be a slaughter fest. Like people are going to die. This is just my gut check before we move on. People are going to fucking die. Okay, and the people that are going to die, I'm sorry, I don't unless they're from class one A. I don't really care that much, so I'm kind of excited to see them die. <laughs> <laughs> There, there's gonna be some major deaths in this anime, but come on. <laughs> I don't I don't give a shit, dude. I don't I mean maybe Aizawa I would care a little bit about if he died. A little bit. But nobody else I don't really give a fuck about. You can kill okay. Endeavor you can kill Endeavor and I'm like, okay. Later, what about if somebody close to Deku die? Um depends. 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 If it's invisible girl, I'm gonna be sad. I'm gonna be sad. I don't want her to die. And that's that's what you worried about. I don't give Not a fuck about. Bakugo. I don't give a fuck about Bakugo. I don't give a shit about Todoroki. I don't give a shit about none of them. Hmm. Uh, or or the uh, or uh, what's his fucking name? Tokoyami is his name, I think. Okay, I mean you Dark ain't named the person I would assume was closest to him. I don't give a shit about none of them. Um, all right, at all. Go ahead, wipe all, all my, might up. All might's gonna die. Yeah, I'm not. I was. <laughs> <laughs> I was already ready for All Might to die when he stopped being All Might. You know what I'm saying? Uh, look, look, this is a this is a, a defense mechanism. Polo already detached from All Might. <laughs> I've been deta- that's, that's the crazy part. After season, I think it was season four. After season four, when he lost his shit, I've been detached because he became literally a background character. He actually became kind of worthless. And for me, again, when when your character loses any, um, it's not even that he lost his power. He just became. <laughs> less than who he always been. Yeah, he can still be inspirational, but he's less inspirational now as his character. He's just less, and that's what I feel about Aaron from Attack on Titan. That's what I feel about Mikasa. That's what I feel about anybody in Attack on Titan. They became less than who they were, and I don't give a fuck. And when I don't give a fuck about your character, I tend to not care about your anime. But luckily, my hero does a lot of different stuff so well that. I'm into it. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm into it again, I should say. Because after mm-hmm. season four and five, I was fucking pissed. I was mad <laughs> because I enjoy this show. I liked it so much. I was the one singing his praises with everybody else until those two seasons. But now I'm back. I'm back. Okay. I'm back, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and it feels good, man. It feels good to enjoy the show again. I really do. I, I want everybody right. to know this, regardless of what you're thinking, okay? I has never gave a fuck about being a contrarian. I never gave a fuck about being anything other than myself. What I feel about anime is what I feel about it. Popular or no. Why I e why I love Bleach. I e why I love Naruto. I e why I even like uh, One Piece. I would never go against the grain just to be different, quote unquote, like a lot of other people do. That's not who I am. I want y'all to know that this is really how I actually feel from the bottom of my heart. I hate Attack on Titan now. I love my hero again. Like this is just this is just me keeping it real because these and everything. And that's why everything I try to talk about, oh, I try to. Go the <laughs> this is why everything I talk about, I try to talk about it as detailed as I possibly can to give y'all an understanding of why I feel this way. So while y'all might not agree with a lot of my points, I'm going to say my points. Okay, fuck what you talking about. All right, next up. Let's go on over to my. Did you get the antagonist on there? No, I did not. <laughs> okay, I'm a, I'm a, hey Polo, edit that in post. <laughs> it's gonna be hard to do that. I got a lot to do, but <laughs> Eminence and Shadows, bro. Season one, episode two, Eminence and Shadows. Spoiler talk. This fucking show is great, bro. So it's this Overlord show, again. It is Overlord again, but it's like 
it is different. It still feels fresh, even though it, it gives us that overlord feel. Because like our character knows what he's doing, but he don't know what he's doing. <laughs> but it's like he got these people that know like everything he said is true. Yep. He just didn't know. <laughs> All the things he made up from the top of his head from when he first met Alpha was all actually true. And that is the funniest shit. I think that's the, that's the funniest part about it. Because the thing is, is, okay, the thing is, watching him fucking train with his sister and then seeing his sister get captured. Oh, my God. It was all just so good. It's I don't know how to explain it, bro. But his, the way he I was mean, training he, with his sister, though, like... Like okay, she's supposed to be the one that everybody sees as the strongest. Like the she's hero. amazing, right? She's the hero, and she can't even tell what he's doing. She can tell the level that he is, but yet she is. She's quite. She's a little perceptive. I think she sees something. Yeah, she slightly perceptive. The thing is, I can't. We can't even use the word perceptive with that because she doesn't even think that her brother is even capable of healing her. Like she did, like she was like he that that boy ain't capable of nothing. He's not growing. He's not doing any better. Like, are you really perceptive? She kind of sensed that she almost got her fucking neck chopped off. But, but she she also spoke about how she learned from him. But she she's always learned from him. But he's never learned from her. Like, and that that's to say that like he's he's subtly teaching her subtly, without yes. overdoing it. Right? Yes, that's exactly right. Yeah. The, the dude is amazing like and to think like this is basically knowledge from his previous life he is able to train her without even up front up front and saying this is how you do it you know i absolutely love the fact that everything that he said was true and when the villain was like yo how the fuck did y'all know this was mm-hmm. he was so baffled at the fact that they knew this knowledge that nobody should have possibly known because they've done just that well of hiding in plain sight it's fucking great, man. It's great. It's great storytelling. Mm-hmm. It's. I feel like this is gonna be a lot. Uh, just this anime is gonna be better. Like I feel like they didn't drop the ball. I I, I might be overhyping. This ain't my my sleeper, but to me this episode was like a, a easy ten nine. It was up there, man. This is a good ass episode for me for Eminence in the Shadow. Couldn't agree like, more. Like I, I I watched some anime. I really enjoyed this. Like I enjoyed the the. Uh, the Gundam, uh, that episode was great. Like I said, Bleach and everything, but this 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 episode just really did it for me. Yeah, me too, me too. Some about this Isekai, like, I love the fact that he's, like, not a hero. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's not trying to, again, it's another overlord situation. He's not trying to protect people, but he is in the shadows, you know, doing his thing. And that's mm-hmm. very unique, yet still familiar. <laughs> I did think it was funny though because when, when he initially came across Alpha uh, as the blob that she was, he yeah. was stopping some some people who were stealing was it goods and, yeah, yeah. and Merchant goods, money yeah. from from his family basically, mm-hmm. and he stops them and takes it all for himself. And I'm like, that's what a, a person in the shadow is gonna do. Like he's like a, he's an antihero. Yeah. He's like on the same level as Deadpool, but he's not as ridiculous. But <laughs> He's still ridiculous within his world, you know. Yeah, like, yeah. so yeah, I, I loved it, bro. And and just to see that he's on that side of things where he's sneaky and able to do like his the slime sword and bodysuit, bro. Bruh, genius, man. That's dope. It's so genius the way to like utilizing magic in a world like this because who's gonna? What can you do against it? Because whatever whatever he can conjure up or think about, he can he can basically do. Mm-hmm. Which is insane, and just transfers the slime sword, body armor, everything to his his team. His pe- oh my god, so good! So uh, so his team is full of orphans, as we know, as he kind of explained briefly. His team is full of orphans that his fam- that he recruited, quote unquote, to basically work at their family mansion or whatever. And again, uh, for the the one or two that we actually that we saw, it was mostly alpha, and then a little bit of beta. Um, I'm already liking their personalities a little bit. I want to see the personalities of the other orphans. That's kind of like my uh, gut check. My gut check is I want to see the uh, personalities of the other orphans and, and how they learned or, or how they were acquired or, you know, how they even fight. Because uh, it was cool to see Alpha throw hands with the, with the dude and she bodied him, basically. Mm-hmm. Made him run away. 
I'm looking forward to uh, I'm looking forward to it. What do you think is uh what's your gut check? Uh I think that uh the girl in the amulet or the, the medallion, he's gonna find her. She's mm. gonna be exactly what we what we thought she is. She's gonna be a blob. He's gonna release her. Boom. She's gonna join his team. And oh, that's gonna be his daughter? That's yeah, the dude daughter he beat. The dude, the dude that he beat, daughter. Mm-hmm. That's gonna be the next person in his crew, and that's gonna be one of his top main characters. Interesting. Him, Alpha, and whoever she is. He's got like what seven now or something like that. Six. six yeah. So seven. I think this will be eight. Interesting. Interesting. Eminence and Shadows is fire so far. It's definitely one I think everybody should put on their radar. Watch it if you're not. Another sleeper I can be proud of. <sighs> Definitely. Now, sleeper, you could be proud of. Tell Blue Lock. Talk to me. So this episode, uh, to me, felt like a uh, not a kick in the face because we had that last episode. <laughs> Quite literally. <laughs> <laughs> but it was like it, it was kind of a kick in the face, though, right? Like if you look at it, because our characters just had this moment where we we uh, had this very intense scenario. It's two, three seconds left on the clock. If they get hit, the last person to get hit with the ball is out. Their chances of ever playing soccer in Japan again is done. Um, and previously, our character got the ball taken from him, passed to him, and then he kicked it at the highest scoring person in their group or their highest ranked person in their group. And then it's essentially taking them out, showing that, you know, they can be better. And it was a, a great moment. And then we, we kind of get to this and we get that kind of explanation. This character is like, why do you do it? Because you got to have that instinct. You got to have that that drive to kill or beat the, the best player. And that, that was dope to see, like, that's what the motivation is. And then they kind of gave us some story on, the, like, the test. Yeah. Why why in Japan they're doing this, the history. Like, yeah, Japan can be top 16 in the world, but they never hit that, that, that number one spot. They, they never get there. And I get it. They got great positions. And like this answers some of the questions we talked about. You wanted to see if they had goalies doing the same thing or other positions doing the same thing. And they, and they, they don't. Right. Because I guess the, the idea is that they are great facilitators in terms of passing, but they're not great scorers. None of, nobody goes in for the kill. So they need a they need actual a player to do that <clears throat> to put them over the top. And I mean, it will. They got somebody who can actually score. But uh, what, did, what did you think about finding out about the other facilities and how our group that we're looking at is literally the, the, the worst of the worst. Yeah. It, I mean, it makes sense for, for uh, let's, <laughs> we need that, that underdog story. Uh, every right. sports anime has. Um, This does something that I think is very, very interesting. I think that um, they treat this like a shonen action anime, which I kind of like. You know, I kind of like, <laughs> I kind of like a lot. Like, I, I'm, I'm ready for some cool fights, and I think that's what the, the, the next episode is going to be, like a cool fight because they're actually going to be playing soccer. But I just, I don't. <sighs> Sports anime still has that, that weird feeling for me. Like, if this wasn't like the battle royale that it is, I think I would, I would be disinterested. Period. Like, I don't think I would be interested at all. Like, mm-hmm. cool. Yeah, you gotta have. They, it looks pretty. You gotta have that fighting. You gotta have that dog in you. Um, mm-hmm. as they say in the sports world, which is cool, and th- that's fine to watch. But I think if, if this was just a sports portion, I would be bored. But because of the battle royale aspects, and because of the like the uh, uh, almost uh, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, Squid Game s games, I don't think I would. Uh, if it wasn't for that, I don't think I would enjoy this as much as I'm enjoying other stuff. Only because my genre ain't sports anime. Sorry, Rob. Um. It just ain't it for me, but I like it. I actually really do like it. I love the art style. I love the quality of the uh, the, the the quality of the character design. And when they talked about the monster and brought that CGI monster in, that shit looked trash. But I was still, <laughs> I was still I like, I get it. I get what you're doing because yeah. if you got that monster in you, and as that character said to our main character, which I don't know any of their names because for some reason none of their names is even. Uh, it can't stick with me, um, but to know that there's the, 300 characters, <laughs> yeah, I get touche. But to know that they, uh, that that guy noticed that our main character has that monster in them also 
it's pretty cool because now I'm looking up, looking forward to seeing how that evolves. You know what I'm saying? Which yeah, it, it most certainly it, will. It has to, right? Because uh, if you the second worst out of three hundred, and you plan on moving up, <laughs> yeah, bro, you got a long way it's to go, brother. <laughs> right, right. I don't know, man. So, I, I'm interested. It's a lot of episodes of this. Oh yeah, yeah. So um, the, the nice thing is that suspense they giving us. So uh, what's your gut check for the next? Uh, I think when they play soccer, it's going to be an opportunity for uh, our guy to our guy to score. No, it's going to be an opportunity for the last person to score, and our guy is going to do something to prevent that and take the glory for himself. So like, uh, you know that. The ball kid who's in last place, I think he's gonna go and, and fucking attempt to score a goal on the opposite team. He's right there, but he, our guy's like, yo, looking at his position that he's currently in, he ain't gonna score this. I need to do what I gotta do to make sure we score, and he's gonna fucking do something to his own teammate, fuck him over, take the ball, and then score it himself. I think it's gonna be a, it's at least gonna happen in this. That's our main just, character? Yeah, that's just you my seem like that. That's that monster, bro. He he fucking knocked out uh, Kiriki Kun or whatever the fuck his name was. He knocked oh him out. Goodness. So oh, why wow. wouldn't he? Why wouldn't he do something that savage? Like, that oh, this, this guy isn't going to score. We need to actually score this fucking goal. I need to take this shit and get that get that shit myself. And then they're going to talk about how, oh, he took advantage of the fact that the other guy wasn't going to score. And they're going to give us this little whole explanation like they did the last episode about, you know, why, you know, he didn't score. If they mentioned uh, Cristiano Ronaldo again, I'm gonna lose it. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> he said Cristiano Ronaldo. They mentioned like four others with him. Yeah. Um, my 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 gut check is this. I I think it's gonna go the same route as Bleach. Um, mm. and I say it because they they made sure to let us know that this is the bottom of the bottom, mm-hmm. right? And True. I think that whoever does not score will get eliminated. Mm. So everybody has so to score once. So it's not going to be that our our guy doesn't score. It's going to be like or it's not going to be that our guy takes out the the weakest person on there his own team. It's going to be that he goes in and he finally gets the chance to score and you know that's why he's at the last one out. So I think I think they're going to get shit on. Though. I think they're going to get dominated like mm. some fierce because everybody like yes these two characters that we see in this group like and the thing is that they made all the characters in our group most of them seem like ominous or intimidating like they're really good players yeah but what's, exercise the, montage. what's the what's the gap here because we're talking you know the the bottom three percent is that group the next group is you know, technically, like the top, like a little bit higher than three percent, if they go against them. But if they go against like the the number one group, they're going to smoke, get smoked immediately. And you know, so I want to see like what the, what the what it is. And like the normal Dubai, season, yeah. be the first group versus the lowest group, right? Mm-hmm. It's interesting to seeing that uh, that one Japanese player talk shit about the Japanese team. Though that was just was pretty funny. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I like this asshole. He, no, no, he's bro. in that group now. Yeah. 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 So. Interesting stuff, man. It's an interesting show. I'm definitely looking forward to more. Like I said, I'm gonna watch it, even though sports ain't my jam. I'm glad you recommended it as a sleep, as your sleeper, though, because I guarantee you, I probably wouldn't watch this. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you one thing, I'm not gonna watch though. I'm not gonna watch that sore one. I tried. The, I the recent, I thought the most recent episode was pretty okay. I, I mean, it probably was. I, I kept. I was like, Yo, I'm not. I can't do this because mm. I I was two episodes behind. So I'm like, I'm watching it, and as it continues, I'm like, I just don't give a fuck about anything that's going on here, and like, I can't do it. I stopped it at about ten minutes in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fuck with it. I'm gonna let that go. I got you, got you. I thought this would have been a real uh, MMO ass episode. Yeah, it's, I mean, just, you know, not all the glitter ain't gold. I feel you. Uh, but yeah, that, I, I agree. It was, it was okay. Um it was something else I watched. I was just like, I don't think I want to watch this no more. What was it? Um, I already said I'm not watching Housing Complex C anymore because that is dead. 
I think you should pick up more than a married couple, but not lovers, bro. Shinobi no Itaki. Oh, Itoki. shit, bro. I wish we would have talked about that first half. That was another good episode. Well, it was a good episode? Yeah, it was a good episode. I, I kind of don't want to watch it no more. Why? You didn't like that it episode? Just, it was... I don't know. It's, I don't think I like the main character. Really? Yeah. Talk to me. I think he just didn't seem like... Like, I get it. He I don't like no that he, he almost... Yeah, I get that, right? He had no idea, even though I feel like that's ridiculous. How the hell are you in a whole ninja family? You got oh, a girl who follow you around with a ninja mask on all the time. I I, I get it. Look, it's a COVID I get mask. It. <laughs> they and they wear them in Japan regularly, yeah, so it's regular, not, you know, yeah, exactly. Do. But how he knows the basics to being a ninja already? Does he? But had no idea. Yeah, they said that you already know the basics to being a ninja because he wanted to be a gymnast. Yeah, that's right. They they taught him everything, right? So like you ain't no clues. We live in this this ninja ass house and this and ninja that, ass building with this ninja ass surrounding. Yes, yeah, so and that's, he don't know that his family got ninja ass origins. That's where I disagree with you because for one, they lived in a regular house. They lived in an apartment. They knew nothing about. He knew nothing about this his village they, they villa. Lived, they lived, you're right. They lived in that house. Yeah, until until later. Also, they're ninja. Their goal is to blend in. They talked about it in the first episode. Our goal is to blend in as much as possible. So how the fuck could he know? He couldn't. He couldn't. He just, he was already, he was just a naturally gifted gym, gymnast, according to his life, and he wanted to live a normal life until all this shit started to happen. And when this shit started to happen, that's when he's like, well, this is overwhelming. He was ready to fucking dip the fuck out because what y'all telling me don't even make sense. Okay. Right. I lived a regular high school life. How are you going to tell me that my mom is a, the head of a village? Shit don't make any sense to him. So with that, with him responding to that like that, I understand his confusion. I do. I get it. It all makes sense. The problem is, is I still them fucking suits, man. Them shits look trash. Like yes, man, I feel like I'm watching. I feel like I'm watching Beyblade or something, man. I just don't. What is this, bro? You don't need the suits. At just, all. I agree. Just, just be ninja, bro. It's stupid. It, that's that part is very stupid to me. But I'm gonna continue to watch it, and I'm gonna report back to you next week if you don't. Uh, but I do want to pick up the ones you talked about, like the oh my god, the more than stupid. more than American. Not, well, more than a married couple, that's what it is. Yeah, more than a married couple, couple lovers. Please do. It's, it's, it was a busy week for me, so I didn't get to watch that yet. But sure. I'm starting it next week. We're going to be on it, and we're definitely talking about that one. Can't wait. Can't wait. Also, make sure y'all come back next week for Bleach Talk. Bleach Talk will continue on right before our spoilers every single week, probably, maybe. We'll see. Um, but that's a wrap for episode 174. All right, <clears throat> all right. We just finished talking about Blue Lock, Eminence and Shadow, and My Hero Academia. Uh, that's going to be our super talk, at least for this week. We'll see how it continues to go going forward. How y'all feeling about Blue Lock, Eminence and Shadow, and My Hero? Y'all loving it just like how we are. These are some pretty good episodes this week. <laughs> On our break, Polo hit us with some great music. I know DJ Polo always killing it. Yeah. Make sure you put it in the Spotify list so y'all can actually listen to it for a change. Uh, we also, before we went on break, we did our new anime recommendation thing. I'm not sure what we're going to call it. Y'all let us know what you think we should call it. But uh, Polo wrote a 19, so he gave you a recommendation in 2019. He gave you quintessential quintuplets, and I gave you Easy Kai Cheap Magician. Uh, and then before they already you know, Polo just talked about our Bleach Talk. It's back. We love it. First two episodes were great. Chainsaw Man, how you feel about that first episode? Let us know. It was amazing to us. We, I know we've been seeing it on the timeline anyway. And thanks for all the great questions on Twitter. Our episodes will be with Eminence and Shadow and more than a married couple, but not lovers. And that's been episode 174 of Mike Check Waifu Waifu. I'm at Polo Born Fly on all social media. I'm at King Teliano on all social media. You can follow our social media at Mike Check Waifu on Twitter and at Mike Check Waifu Waifu on Instagram and TikTok. And as always, Mike, Mike, Mike Check. check, check, check. To Mike Check Waifu Waifu. Is that you? Is that you? Is that you? Is that you? Is that you?